welcome to the prayer circle where we are putting prayer in its place of power. And this time we're going to talk about praying within the circles of the character and the activity of God. Now I'm going to try to make that more simple for you. But we want to rescue prayer from not being heard. Have you ever prayed and just wonder if God's hearing me at all? Have you ever had that problem? And so are we learning that we can slow down and actually think about this thing and say, where is God working and how can I join him? And we want to hear, participate with God's heart. And so there's a little, uh, we have these three circles up here and you've seen these in the previous series. But we have the Father and we have the Son and we have the Holy Spirit. And this little red part is where all three come together. This has become a real common little figure around this church. But I want to add another circle to it. And it's this circle. Coming out of the heart of a God is the activity of God. And Romans chapter 11 and verse 36 says, Of Him and through Him and to Him are all things. Everything that's going to be eternal, everything that's going to last, comes from the heart of God, and it happens through the heart of God, and it goes back to the heart of God for God's glory. Now, as a church, this is where we want to be. I, I don't want to, for anyone to take this offensively, but I sometimes have a pro hard when I, a problem hearing somebody say, well, let's just pray until something happens. Or let's pray until God does something. God's always working. He's always working. And probably my biggest job is to find out where he's working and join him and pray accordingly. And so that's the idea here in this thought. We want to put prayer in the place. And this is actually, when I, when I gave this thing a title, uh, the prayer circle, it was actually within these circles because I want to live in here. And let me tell you, this is an amazing statement. Listen to this. Ready? God has called us to the fellowship of Jesus Christ. God has called us here. This is our main calling for us to come here and have fellowship with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. It's our privilege as believers to be able to come there and have fellowship. Believe it or not, I want to use a scripture here that we're very familiar with. And I want you to jump in on this. And I want you to listen as I read this about the different elements of this scripture. And where can we find a prayer that kind of models praying within the character and the Godhead? And I actually find it in the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer that he gave us. So I'm going to read it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, isn't that a delightful prayer? Tell me some things that you heard in that prayer. What are some of the qualities and ingredients in that prayer? God is holy. Okay, God is holy. And so our prayers need to understand that, don't they? What else? What else you know? His will be done. His will be done. So it's God's kingdom, God's will, God's glory. He'll meet our needs every day. Okay. And you know what, Jim? I just want to say this. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, so much of our praying focuses on physical needs. But in this particular prayer, it's seven words in, in one line. Contentment with a day, one day at a time. Something else? Okay, Father. You know what? One you haven't said yet. And it starts with, the, the prayer starts with it. Our do you know that every pronoun in this prayer is plural? So here, here's what it is. It's like it considers us a group. 
Because if she goes down, she goes down. If he hurts, he hurts. And don't del deliver us from temptation. Give us daily bread. Our Father, which art in heaven. And so the whole idea is like this model prayer <clears throat> that includes the character and activity of God. It's like the group for the kingdom. Now, Becky and I were talking the other day. And you talked about how you develop, you're developing a war room. Mm -hmm. And God laid on your heart how to pray. Tell us about it. Well, I was introduced to the movie, and I'd asked the Lord earlier in the year, teach me more about prayer. And so that was kind of my focus for that year, and I'd been thinking about it a lot. And so our youngest daughter moved out, and her room, she had painted this big calendar on the wall with chalk paint, and she had this little cubby hole, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make that my war room. So I took a lot of time, because I'm a visual person, made it really pretty, you know, and I got a pretty rug and got everything all set up and my devote, my color pencils and everything. And so it took me about a week to do it how I thought it needed to be. So then I, first day I'm going to go down there and use my war room. So how I many go, ladies are relating to this right now? Okay. Very good. All right. <laughs> so I go down there and I sit and I get set down with my Bible and then Okay, now what? <laughs> and so just in the quiet, I said, Lord, what's going to be, what do I need to pray for? What do I need to pray for? What's going to be my first verse that I stick on there? And so I quietly sat there for a while. And in my mind came just two little words that said, my church. Hmm. So I got, opened my Bible, and it was what I was ready to read as, my, as I was systematically reading through the Old Testament. I was ready for Haggai. So I read chapter 1, and I came to chapter 2, and I just, I was so excited. The verse says, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? This was at about 60 years after Solomon's um, temple was destroyed. So... Um, Zerub Haggai was the prophet, and Zerubbabel, he's wanting him to rebuild it, you know, and all the people were discouraged. Was that who's left among you? Well, if it had only been about 60 some years, there was probably some people there that had saw the way it was before, you know. So I'm like, okay. And it said, be strong, Zerubbabel, be strong, Joshua. Um, work, for I am with you. My spirit remains in your midst, and fear not. And the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Of course, we know that he's ultimately talking about Jesus coming and being the ultimate glory of the church to rebuild it. But for me, it was the prayer. I said, that's it, Lord. So I, I wrote those verses out, and so I pray, Lord, help us to be strong as a church. Help us to keep working for you. Help us not to fear. Your, help your spirit to remain in us and may we glorify you as a church. Okay, so Becky has done two things. She went, put it on the foundation of scripture, right? And then she waited on the Lord as to what to pray. And as a result, she had great joy that day in seeing God give her that prayer. So what we're doing, guys, is we're putting prayer in its place of power on scripture and within the character and the Godhead and the activity of God himself. So, check out our companion blog and let's put prayer in the place of power at the heart of God. Mm -hmm.